Speaking of filtering, sometimes some of the instruments, the one I'm using here, a little sensitive. I mean, they're very, very sensitive, and you will see noises that aren't really there, per se, and you use filtering in the scope. Sometimes you can't filter it out because it's a real problem. It's an RFI EMI issue. So it's interference. Now, grounding and shielding is always the first step when you can discover some sort of an issue with interference in a circuit. And obviously, move the circuit, shield the circuit, those kind of things. As far as shielding the circuit, a braided ground strap is very effective. The braid gives the electrons going through the air, the RFI, radio frequency interference, a place to jump onto, like a landing deck of an aircraft carrier, and go to ground. My little test braided ground strap has got good, clean, tight alligator clips, but I'll use the shortest one as possible, a piece of ground strap, and then tie it between, let's say, the hood and the cowling, like a lot of police cars use for a lot of their telecommunication issues that have EMI RFI problems. So braided ground straps are helpful, shielded cables, also twisted pair. Take a couple of wires, a little longer than you need, different colors, put one end of the two wires in the vise, chuck the other two wire end of the two wires up in a cordless drill, and just spin the drill and twist those wires to make twisted pair yourself. If you're replacing twisted pair that's already twisted, like in a CAN bus circuit on a vehicle, and you want to make sure you want the same number of twists per inch the car has, for the proper shielding, then what you want to do is just lay a tape measure in the bins, and as you make your twisted pair with your drill, you twist your drill until you've got the same number of twists per inch that the car had. These things are super important. Thinking outside the box, as far as the combating R EMI RFI, or the AC signals on a car, capacitors work wonders to filtering AC unwanted AC off of a circuit. You tie one side of the capacitor to the DC circuit, the other side goes to ground, and DC goes right on past that cap, ignores it, and does its job. The AC that you don't want is pulled off to ground, and there's an art of matching the capacitor's size to the particular frequency you think you have, and sometimes your scope can tell you that. You can also use ferrite cords and ferrite beads. This is what goes around a wire, per se, and basically they have clamp on, or you can slide the wire into it, and being ferrite means it's ferrous, metal will stick to it, or magnet will stick to it. It will help with magnetic waves as well as RFI, EMI issues, so it's a little choke or filter just to slide over a wire. Then you have the filter that goes in series with a circuit. Uh, this is a coil, and those are noise filters. AC does not like to go through a coil. The DC, let's say to a radio or to a computer, will go through the coil just fine. Make sure you have the coil rated to handle the current that you're going to put this thing in series with. And then a combination of the two, a capacitor and a coil, is called a filter package. This guy worked miracles for me for years combating EMI RFI issues, and that's a cap and a coil combined electrically. It looks like that. There's your power source. There's the uh, capacitor and the coil. The coil represented by an, a, a resistor symbol and the capacitor there above the word ground. So the cap goes in parallel to your DC circuit. You're trying to stop problems from getting through to the load, for example and then the coil goes in series. Finally, you may have to use some shielded cable like they use for antennas, and the size of the tiny conductor that goes through the middle is important as it comes to the internal impedance for AC going through that circuit. So keep those things in mind as well.